And he feels, and I agree with him, but we really need a fundamental change in the way the AI field defines itself. Rather than saying the goal is just to make machines as intelligent as possible, the goal should be to make AI as beneficial as possible for humanity. And uh, what can we do to make this happen? So hopefully I've depressed you enough now for one day. <laughs> Let's switch the cheering you up for the final minutes of the talk. What can we do? A lot, actually. And that's what I want to end on. I think, uh, how much, how many more minutes do I have? Yeah? Go for ten. Okay, so, let me very briefly say a little bit about nuclear weapons first. So, one thing that's remarkably helpful is just getting the facts out. It actually really does help. For example, a common explanation of this graph is that the reason that the nuclear stockpile got cut from here to there which was always, was always a good in terms of the amount of nuclear winter you'll have if, if the stupid machine goes off. It was caused by the end of the Cold War. But you can make a good case that that's not true. That the main reason it's actually turned around was a different one. Because of some because of scientific research that was done on nuclear winter. Look at when the turnaround happens. It happened before the, the Cold War end, before the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1990, right? This is exactly when the nuclear winter research came out, and people started realizing, oh my god, uh, it's not mutual assured destruction, it's MA mad, it's, it's self-assured destruction, sad. Like, <laughs> suppose the U.S. launches its fantastic first strike against Russia, or the Soviet Union then, which is so successful that not a single Soviet, Soviet nuke explodes on U.S. territory. You would say, we won, right? No, we didn't. Then we get this new. Then we get ten years of no food, and very little sunshine, and we get we're com just completely screwed. So it's an own goal, is what it is, right? Um, but this became clear. It had a big impact. Uh, you don't have to take my word for it. You can just take the word of the people who actually made the decisions to start cutting stockpiles. Such famous peaceniks as Robert, Ronald Reagan. Uh, here's what he actually. He's already actually said in an interview about this, already in 1985, five years before the Soviet Union collapsed, he said, talks about nuclear winter here. He says, uh, a great many reputable scientists are telling us, you know, about nuclear winter. You can read for yourselves here. Volcanoes, we saw the weather so changed that there was no snow in July in many temperate countries, and they call it the year in which there was no summer. Now, if one volcano can do that... What are we talking about with the whole nuclear exchange, the nuclear winter that scientists have been talking about? It's possible. This very much influenced him to want to greatly reduce the nuclear stockpile. Gorbachev, who, with whom Reagan negotiated and agreed upon many of these dramatic cuts, says basically the same thing. He says, look, models made by Russian and American scientists showed that nuclear war would result in a nuclear winter that would be extremely destructive to all life on Earth. And this was a great stimulus to us. To act, right? So, who did this? Was it some super well-funded mega effort? No, it was a handful of scientists with like a few hundred thousand dollars in grant support. Some guy in Rutgers University, a couple of guys in the in so, in Soviet Union, had this huge impact. Simply by, fate, by doing good science and really getting the word out, right? So that shows the great power that people like you can have. Another thing you can do right now is, is pick a very simple, clear-cut battle and, and, and fight it. I th my favorite with nukes is just to create stigma around nuclear weapons, because there's this very pervasive meme out there. Most people I ask will say, well, even my science colleagues at MIT, they'll say, oh, well, you know, yeah, it's terrible with all these nukes, but, you know, uh, it's really thanks to the nuclear deterrence that we haven't had, that we're not, we haven't had any terrible war between the U.S. and Russia, you know, and it provides stability, and I know it's bad, but, you know, I don't think we can do without them either. That's what most people say, right? But, I think you can make it very... So, if you say, oh, I think we should abolish all nuclear weapons or whatever, and go on a big campaign with peace signs and things, you're going to meet very hostile resistance. So, pick, let's pick a middle ground argument, which is much easier to defend, which basically everybody, you know, logical and listens will have to agree with. And push for that. 
I think we can make a very good argument that having any nation having more than 200 nukes is just completely wasting their money for no gain whatsoever. Uh, how many nukes do you need to have good deterrence? Really one, right, to drop on your en enemy's capital. But maybe you want the second one if it doesn't work. And Okay, let's do 200 so you have the most in the world. Because all other nations other than US and, and Russia have less than 200. Uh, if we could cut from the current 8,000 that the US has to 200, huge improvement for nuclear winter, right? The turns wouldn't be reduced at all. A lot of money would be saved. So I think you can argue that the U.S. And, or Russia could just unilaterally cut back to 200 and be incredibly intimidating still. And this would mean then that further nuke building and modernization, which the U.S. Is, and Russia and China are currently budgeting billions and billions of dollars for, is actually just completely dumb and a waste of money. So, so one thing you can actually do is you can just lobby your pension fund to make sure that at least your money doesn't get invested in, in companies building nuclear weapons. Because you can say, you know, I'm not... Nuclear weapons aren't illegal. Smoking isn't illegal either, but I just don't want my pension invent, invested in cigarette companies or gambling companies or whatever. And to make things easier, you can look up your pension fund on this Don't, don't Bank on the Bomb website. They've tracked the $402 billion being invested in, in building nuclear weapons and modernizing them. And they've actually done this very clever campaign, which is getting some traction. It's a grassroots, totally grassroots campaign founded by these two women we met in New York. Just like a, and now they have a slick website, but they can use help. They just got the biggest pension fund in all of Holland to adopt the official policy that they're not investing in cigarettes and they're not investing in nuclear weapons. And there's this divest movement. Um, it's very easy. You can, take, you can take 15 minutes if you have some savings account, your parents have a pension plan or whatever. You know, call them up and ask, are you investing in nuclear, my funds in nuclear weapons? And they'll be like, no, no, no. And then you can tell them, well, you know, actually you are because you're investing in this company. No, really? And, and then many of these companies actually want to have a, a sort of profile where they don't invest in uh, what they consider sort of sin stocks, right? And this is a very well, good way of starting to create the sort of stigma around nukes, which has been so successfully created around smoking. Smoking isn't illegal, but raise your hand if you're a smoker. Wow. If I did this poll in 1930, it would have been so different, right? Why? It's not because smoking has been banned. It's not because there's some politicians from the top did this. But a bunch of scientists, first of all, kind of won the debate and really managed to persuade people that smoking was harmful. And it created a stigma. It's not considered that cool to be a smoker anymore. Most smokers I know are trying to stop. And uh, one way you can help create this kind of stigma is by getting this sort of divest campaign. And every time some company that adopts this policy it gets in the news. So this is one very simple little thing you can do.